Goedemorgen en baie welkom bij Every Nation Ilardes Park. Ons is een splinter nieuwe kerkplant in die omgeving en ons is so blij dat jy vandag ook by ons inskakel. Ek weet van jullie skakel in oor die hele wereld of oor die hele land, of het nou dier vriend of vriendin is of selfs dier jou kinders of familie. Baie welkom dat jy vandag saam met ons keier. Every Nation is a, is a gemeente wat deel is van een stadswaie kerk, hier so in Tswane, Pretoria, maar ook oor die hele land en ook oor die hele wereld in meer as 80 lande. En ons die eenvoudige hart om disciples te maak, leiders op te rug en ook kerke en campusbedieningen te plant. So welcome to everybody joining in today. We're so glad you have decided to spend time with us in celebrating and worshiping God through song, through fellowship, even though it's online, and through the amazing Word of God. I know today will bless you. We're in a series called Rebuild, and all of us in some way need to rebuild what has been shaken or shattered or broken because of this global crisis all of us are in. Ons begin, soos oudere gewoonte, uh, elke sondag met uh, celebrations, met dinge wat ons wil vier. Nou, verlede week, sondag, uh, het my sienkie vier jaar oud geword, my en Isabel, sy sien Wijnand, ons oudste, so ons het lekker partijkie gehou. En uh, as jy elke partijkie het, of iemand het vir jaar, die week wat voorbij is, iemand kom, sê dit sommer net die onder in die comment, dat ons saam met jou uh, virtual high five kan gee, en ons wens ons kon vir jou chocolade uitdeel, maar uh, ons, sal, ons sal een plan maak. Um, daar ook enige hewelikse herdenkings, of uh, enige verlovings, of nieuwe babaikies wat, wat uh, amper hier is, ek weet daar is een of twee mense, ek weet Jani en Hanu, hele kleinkie is amper hier so, uh, maar laat weet ons, dat ons dit saam met jou kan vier. As jy enig is het om vandag te vier, kom ek bid sommer net oor jylle. Jesus, dankie vir familie, dankie, al is ons hier by mekaar, en dat ons nog steeds kan dankie sê, dat een die details van ons levens betrokken is. Heer, ek bid vir elkeen wat vir jaar het, of gaan vir jaar in die week, sal jy hulle sien, hulle pad rug, dat hulle leven vir jy en vir jy aanleen. Heer, ek dankie vir amal wat sy levens in die week of in die tyd aangeraak word. Heer, ons bid sommer vir, vir Hanu en vir Jani, vir die kleinkie, wat so amper hier so is, hou richter, tromp, heer, hulle eerste laatie, ons sien hulle, mag het so goeie bevalling ook wees, en heren, dankie vir familie, dankie vir vandag saam, en mag ons in hierdie herbou, this rebuild series, heren, mag ons ons fondatie net op die bou, in Jesus naam, Amen. Amen. Soos ek nou nou genoem het, ons is een disciple makende familie, ons kerk is gebouw op disciplescap, en Matthies 28, sê die heren, en ek sê vir jou in die Engels, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and teach them to obey everything I have commanded you. And lo and behold, I'm with you till the very end of the age. As die Heere sê, gaan maak disciples, praat hy van mense. En die eerste disciples, toe hulle dit hoor, toe weet ek, hulle het daar gestaan, en nie gedink, kom ons gaan na mense wat al reeds die Heere ken, en maak het van hulle nog beter disciples nie, kom ons gaan na die wat die Heere nog nie ken nie. En met die nieuwe kerkplant is dit ook ons hart om uit te reik na mense wat ook die Heere nie ken nie. Of dalk luister jy vandag vir die eerste keer in jou verhouding met die Heere het, het begin afkoel of jou fondaties is baie geskut in die tyd. Nou ek glo in discipleskap. Discipleskap het my leven verander. Al het ek die Heere dalk al lang geken in my leven, toe iemand kom en ek wil amper af sê, systematies die rechte bouwsteen in my leven kom leen maar kom leer, wat is ware repentance, what is lordship, what is the baptism, what is the baptism in the Holy Spirit, what is church all about, what is spiritual warfare all about, het ek rechtig eers begin sterk fondaties kry, en ek vir jou aanmoedig, as jy nog nie in een van ons discipleskap groepe is nie, ons noem dit connect groepe, of jy wil gedisciple word, jy wil sterk fondaties in jou leven kry, nou op die oomlik, in die comments box is daar een link, wat sê, hoe kan ek deel word van so'n kleine groep, van so'n connect groep. Ons doen het primair, mans, mans, vrouwens, vrouwens, dat ons kan diep, sterk fondaties lei, en le, en um, ek weet, ons het wonderlijke groep leiders wat recht staan om jou te kan help daarmee. So vul dit asjeblief in. Ek het ook nou nou genoem dat Every Nation is deel van een familie wat oor die hele land is, maar ook oor die hele wereld. En een keer die jaar het ons een conferentie met die naam Build. En so interessant genoeg, die naam vir hierdie keer is Rebuild, en 
Het is niet toevallig dat het eigenlijk diezelfde thema is, is waar met ons thans bezig is nie. In die Rebuild conferentie, gewoonlijk zou dit bij een plek plaatsgevind het in Johannesburg, maar nou dat ons allemaal in lockdown is, kan jij ook daarvan deel wees. So 30 to 31 of May, in your homes, you can join this amazing conference. Uh, speakers from all over the world, not being here physically, but online, and also some of our local speakers. Saturday evening, the 30th, and then the 31st, the Sunday, 9 o'clock and 5 o'clock, different sessions with different speakers and the whole theme of Rebuild. And I'm going to hand over to Pastor Steve Murrell, our international president, an amazing, humble leader, and a disciple-making machine, who's just going to share with you what this conference is all about so that you do not miss out on it. Pastor Roger and Nicola and all of my friends in every nation, Southern Africa, I look forward to being with you at our upcoming Build Conference, um, or now our Rebuild Conference. And uh, we're gonna talk about what it means not only to build, but to rebuild. And when a storm comes through, it is pretty often that we have to rebuild. We just had a storm here in Nashville uh, the last few days and trees are down and fences are down and parts of houses uh, have blown away and there's rebuilding happening. And so as we come out of this global crisis, this global health crisis and financial crisis and relational crisis and even spiritual crisis, there will be some rebuilding. But no matter what we're building, no matter what we're rebuilding, no matter what the storm has hit, we have to build, according to Matthew 7, on the rock, and the rock is Christ. And so we're going to be talking about building on Christ, every part of our lives, our families, our businesses, our relationships being built on Christ. I look forward to being with you. This will be the first time I've ever been to South Africa without jet lag. We're coming to you online. I wish I could be there physically face-to-face -face with all of you, uh, but at least we'll be there uh, digitally. So look forward to seeing you at our Rebuild Conference soon. So, ons Rebuild Conference, wat aan plaas van 30 en 31 mei, ons zondagdienst gaan net zo so aangaan die selfde tyd, maar dit gaan deelvorm van hierdie wonderlijke conferentie, wat jy nie kan uitmis nie. Dit gaan op ons Facebook platsy wees, soos jy ook hierdie dienst nou kyk, so dat enig iemand kan deel wees daarvan, moet dit nie misloop nie. Ons gaan um, nou een tyd van lof en aanbidding ingaan, um, dier muziek, maar van net so, 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 so stapje terug neem. Uh, ek is bezig om dier die ou bekende boek van Rick Warren, A Purpose Driven Life te werk. Ek en my pa werk en ek sal saam dier dit elke dag. En ek is daar by die gedeeltes wat praat oor aanbidding. En hoe kan ons die Heere aanbid dier baie meer as net muziek? Uh, vriende, toe die Heere in Johannes 4 met die vrou by die pit praat, en hy sê daar kom een tyd, en die tyd is nou, waar die vader soek na ware aanbidders, wat om in waarheid en in gees aanbid. Toe, toe slaan het my weer op nie, dat die Heere is nie beperkt tot een sekere gebouw, of een sekere berg, soos in Johannes 4, hy praat van waar moet hulle aanbid nie. Nee, hy is oorals, want hij is gees. En hy wil so graag uit jou gees uit oor, dat jy hom aanbid, maar nie net dier my siek nie. Die manier die jou kinders hanteer op die oom, die manier die jy moet werk van die huis af, hoe, hoe jy net al die varkies op hok probeer hou, mag alles gedoen word soos vir die Heere en nie vir mense nie. Maar as ons dan ook nou dier my siek om aan bid, bid ek dat jy rechtig hier diep in jou hart sal weet dat die Heere saam met jou daar in jou kamer is, saam met jou familie is, dat soos ons hom aan bid, hy ons hart ook weer kom vol maak, want ons weet ons aan bidding bring een glimlach. So, Bona Church, good morning. It's good to worship with you guys again. My name is Christian Miller. This is Lindry Atkins. She is also our citywide music leader. And this is Jana. Uh, she is a worship leader at Henops. You guys should know her. Uh, it's what a privilege to be leading worship with you guys this morning. I hope you guys are expectant. Let's just close our eyes before we start. Lord, as we just become aware of your presence, we pray, Lord, that you will be worshipped in spirit and in truth this morning. Lord, we pray that you will just come and 
open our hearts, come and still our minds so we can solely focus on you, Lord. You are so worthy to be to be stu- stood in awe of. You are worthy to be gazed upon, Lord, and I just pray that you'll be lifted up this morning. Amen. I was buried beneath my shame Who could carry that kind of way? It was my turn Till I made you I was breathing but not a lie All my failures I try to hide It was my turn Till I made it Because you call my name And I ran out of that grave Louder than the unbelief 
Who we raise a hallelujah Who we bring a hallelujah Here in the middle of the storm We raise a hallelujah Oh, when the wind blows We'll raise our hallelujah In the middle of the storm You are there Oh, you're everywhere in the middle of the storm Oh, we raise a hallelujah Yeah, we raise a hallelujah Yeah, we raise a hallelujah I just want you to, wherever you're standing at the moment, I just want you to just surrender. Some of you are watching, I just feel led to say this, that it's just, you are just struggling to surrender. It's just that last bit of rope that you are still holding on to. And I just feel God saying this morning over you that your weapon is your hallelujah. The fact that you are fighting just means that you are delusional because you cannot fight. You don't have the power to fight anything. So you can just take off your gloves and just, just. What the suck? <laughs> just put your arms down. Just open your fists and just stop fighting. Just surrender this morning. And this morning, your weapon is your hallelujah. So as we just sing this, I just need you this morning you just start raising your hallelujah wherever you are at the moment just start singing i raise my hallelujah lord no matter my emotions no matter how i feel at this moment i'm i don't feel like surrendering lord i don't feel like raising this hallelujah but in faith lord i believe that you died on the cross i believe that you have victory over everything you reign over everything lord you are seated on the throne you are sovereign lord and you take everything that the enemy meant for evil and you turn it into good, Lord. The worst thing that can happen to us is that we can lose everything that we have. That is, that's okay. That's, that's the worst thing that can happen to us. Lord, you are enough for us, Lord, and we raise our hallelujahs. Jesus, you are worthy to be praised, Lord. You are worthy to be lifted up, Lord. Just be the center, not only of our lives, but just in this moment, Lord. Lord, we don't have to beg you to be present. You are always present, Lord. There's no place that you are not. So Lord, we just pray that you'll come and make us aware of your presence. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. And this morning, I, I need you to surrender. I need you to lead yourself into worship. That is your weapon this morning. And husbands, you are the one that's going to lead your family into this worship. You need to um, take down your arms, open your fists, and just raise your hallelujah, raise your arms. Just start singing it. Who oh, we raise a hallelujah. Oh, this is our weapon of warfare. Who oh, we raise our voices as we sing hallelujah, hallelujah. You are sovereign God. There's no place you are not There's nothing more powerful than you Oh, death has been defeated
Oh, fear has been broken Oh, God is watching over your family He's watching over your children Oh, let go of this burden Give it to the Almighty God Lord, we surrender We raise a hallelujah We raise our hallelujah We raise our hallelujah Standing all of you, oh, we join with the angel, we join with the planet, we join with creation, and we shout it out, holy, 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 we sing holy, holy. Holy Oh, you are worthy, worthy, worthy We lift our voice, you are worthy, worthy, worthy Got 
God Almighty reigns. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. For the Lord God Almighty reigns. times most of the troubles that we face and most of the fear most of the insecurities most of the uncertainties that we all face sometimes it's just a little switch that needs to happen you see because when we are focused on ourselves we see imperfection none of us are perfect all of us are busy being made more like Christ daily, which means that we are not there yet. And when we see ourselves, we are not gazing upon something perfect. We are not being drawn towards something bigger than ourselves, holy, better than ourselves, the one who is perfect. So sometimes it's just a little switch. And you know what? That switch is not contingent on your belief in it. You might not feel like believing, but it's a small switch and you can do it right now. And just say, Lord, I'm sorry for, for being self-centered, which, which has caused me to be insecure, fearful. But Lord, this morning in faith, I turn my eyes towards you and I gaze towards the only one who is good. Now we can stand alongside our brothers and sisters and raise one voice because we all have something in common is we are so dependent on this perfect Father. This is not a joke, people. Lord, all we can sing when we are in your presence is holy, holy, holy. Justice is the foundation of your throne. Justice belongs to you, Father, and we trust you for that. In the city, in our lives, in our businesses, as employees, Lord, we trust that justice is yours. You are sovereign. If you want us to have our businesses, we will have our businesses. But Lord, if we lose our businesses, then so be it. Your will be done, Father. That's the worst that can happen to us. You are enough, Jesus. Don't disengage in this moment. Just, just keep your eyes closed. Keep gazing upon the Father. Lord, we trust you this morning that you will just come and shine your light on our hearts, on our souls, on our minds, Lord. Please come and renew our minds. It's easy to say that we believe, Lord, but please come and help us to believe better. We worship you, Father. Amen.
Father, thank you that you are holy, that you are worthy, and that you are God Almighty. Thank you that we can declare this over every situation in our lives. Lord, thank you that your love is so immense and so unconditional for us all. Lord, will you uh, just stir our hearts this morning? May they be open to receiving your word. And we pray this in your mighty name. Amen. Good morning, family. Um, it's such a privilege to be with you this morning and to share the message with you. Um, we're currently busy with a sermon series entitled Rebuild um, that focuses on helping us to understand what it means to rebuild our lives and society after the storm that we are all currently facing. In the first week, uh, Retief shared with us the introduction on Rebuild, how to build our foundation on God, our rock. And last week, he shared with us how to reset by putting our trust fully in God. This morning's message is entitled Reignite. So how can we as a church and as believers fan into flame our passion and our desire for intimacy and for quality devotional time spent with the Lord? How can we cultivate a lifestyle of devotion? Now, during this lockdown period, um, my husband Shane and myself, we've had a lot of time to think about and to reflect on what really matters to us, what is meaningful in our lives, and what are our priorities. We've had time to think about what needs to be cut off and also the things that we feel need to be cut out of our lives, things that could possibly have been stealing time from us as a family, but also time spent with God. We've had time to reflect too on our devotional lifestyles. Do we prioritize time with God and time spent in his word daily? So from the following scripture, there are three points that I truly feel that speak into the concept of how can we cultivate a lifestyle of devotion and intimacy with God. Let's take a look at the scripture together. If you have your Bibles with you, please open up with me to Psalm 1, verse 1 to 3. And uh, you're welcome to give a little thumbs up in the comment section below to, to let us know that you're following with us. So let's read together. From verse 1, Blessed is the one who does not walk in step with the wicked, or stand in the way that sinners take, or sit in the company of mockers, but whose delight is in the law of the Lord and who meditates on his law day and night. That person is like a tree planted by streams of water, which yields its fruit in season, and whose leaf does not wither. Whatever they do prospers. So the first point I'd like to share with you is planning and prioritizing. In verse 1 and 2, we see a comparison made between a person who chooses to walk with sinners and mockers in comparison to one who chooses to delight in the law of the Lord and who meditates on it day and night. We have a choice to make daily. Do we walk in the ways of the world or do we choose to spend time in God's word and to delight in it? The word meditation also means focused concentration. And I know for myself that if I need to focus on something, if I need to truly concentrate on it, then I need to plan and prioritize to spend time in that. I need to prepare myself to be able to concentrate best. So cultivating a lifestyle of devotion takes planning and prioritizing too. We should put time aside each day and night to spend time with our Father. Now, for some, planning might mean literally writing down, uh, setting a date and a time in your diary, or setting a reminder and alarm on your phone. For others, it means to prepare and to um, uh, get in place the room, the area in which you're going to have your quiet time, ensuring that it is a place that is quiet, serene, where there are no distractions. Your phone is put to the side, TV is not available, laptop closed, 
so that you can truly focus on the Word of God. To prioritize time with God means to give Him your first fruits, committing to Him that time of the day when you feel the most energized and when you can concentrate best, when you can truly delight in Him and in His Word. Friends, God is desiring for us to spend time with Him. He longs for us to sit at his feet and hear from him. Just before lockdown period, um, we decided not to stockpile toilet paper, but rather to stockpile plants. Um, we saw this opportunity of this forced time at home to really spend quality time in the garden together as a family. And this took um, planning and preparation. We wanted to tend to and care for those uh, flower beds, those areas in our garden that had been neglected, that we didn't usually get around to because of our busy lives. We knew the rewards that we could reap and the fruit that we would see if we pri prioritized completing the tasks. In the same way, in order to tend to our own garden, in order to cultivate a lifestyle of devotion, we need to plan to meditate on God's word daily. The second point that I'd like to share is consistency and discipline. In verse 2, it says, How blessed is the one who delights in the law of the God and meditates on it day and night. There is a consistency revealed here a discipline required in order to bear fruit. And in Luke 5 verse 16, we are given the perfect example of Jesus. It says, but Jesus often withdrew to lonely places and prayed. Jesus sets the example of a son who would consistently make time to withdraw to a quiet place and spend time with the Father day and night. Jesus also answers to Jewish uh, leaders in John 5, verse 19 and 20, where he says that he can do nothing by himself and can only do what he sees the Father doing and that the Father shows him all he does. And I believe that it was during Jesus' times of devotion with the Father that he was shown what to do. He was shown what was the next step. It was out of those quiet times in prayer with God that he got the Father's heart. There too needs to be a consistency and a discipline when we are tending to a garden. We've seen in our garden, if we fail to water, to prune and to weed, then the plants will merely wither and die or just not bear fruit. In John 15, we're reminded that God is the gardener. When we spend time reading the Bible, he speaks to us through his word, which helps to water our souls. It prunes and shapes what needs to be changed in our hearts, and it weeds out that which does not belong, the sin in our lives. The third point is the right heart. In order to cultivate a lifestyle of devotion, we should not view the time spent with God as a chore, a task, a duty, or feel compelled to complete it out of religion. It's not something that we need to tick off of a to-do list. Friends, God is after our hearts. He wants us to delight in Him and in His Word, which is His truth spoken over us. His purpose for us is to bear fruit. We are called to bear fruit. And this promise is for one and all. If we refer back to Psalm 1 in verse 2, it says, But blessed is the one whose delight is in the law of the Lord. God wants us to delight in his word and in him. Verse 3, That person is like a tree planted by streams of water where we can get our nutrients, our nourishment, which yields its fruit in season when you can bear fruit in God's timing, whose leaf does not wither, our faith will not be shaken, and whatever they do prospers. 
God wants us to prosper in our lives and not to fail. The father is longing for relationship with his children. And how is a relationship strengthened? How is trust earned? Through time spent together. Enter into your devotional times with the Lord, earnestly desiring his presence. Allow yourself to delight in him so that you may bear the fruit you were called to bear. So that you may become a garden full of life, one that people want to enter in and spend time in. Let us be a people who, number one, prioritize time spent with the Father and time studying and reading his word. Number two, commit to seeking him daily, allowing this new discipline to be a constant in our routines. And number three, let us come to him with the right attitude and heart, a heart that is thankful that desires to know him better and in turn delights in him and his word. In closing, I feel that for some, especially during this lockdown period, you had all the intentions of spending more time with the Lord, but you feel that you may have failed, that you haven't prioritized time spent with him, reading his word and in prayer. And you may be asking, where do I start? And I truly feel that the answer is with him. Go back to the Father. Commit to being disciplined in setting time aside daily to delight yourself in him, knowing that his arms are wide open and ready to embrace his children. I'm reminded of the father of the prodigal son. When the son was still far off, the father went running towards him. In Luke 15, 20, it says, And while he was still a long way off, his father saw him coming. Filled with love and compassion, he ran to his son, embraced him and kissed him. And that is the father's heart for you and for me. God is calling us back to him, back to a place of deeper intimacy with him. There may also be those of you who have never had a relationship with the Lord. And you've never made a decision to spend time reading the Bible, studying his word. You can make that decision now. It's never too late to start cultivating a lifestyle of devotion with God. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you so much that you are such a loving God. Thank you that you long for your children to come and sit at your feet and hear from you. Thank you that your arms are open, ready to embrace us as we come back to you, Lord. I pray that you will help us to be wise and give us guidance as to how can we prioritize time spent with you better. How can we give you our first fruits, that time of the day when we feel most energized, Lord? Father, thank you that we can delight in your word. Thank you that you are the true gardener who wants to prune us and shape us, who wants to weed out that which, doesn't, that which does not belong. Thank you, Lord, that your, your heart for us is good. You are a good, good Father. Father, we commit to being more disciplined and more consistent in our devotional time with you, Lord. And that because we are being filled with your spirit and filled with your word, that that will draw people closer to you as well. We thank you, Lord, for your faithfulness, for your mercy and your grace that is new each day. We pray this in your precious name. Amen. Jessica, wow, what a word. Bye bye, thank you for that. That it um, so deep in my heart. And um, I, uh, I can so very insulting with what you said. Means what so begeerd it and so bad that you're at the spandier and lockdown and then gebeur die lewe en dis kinders en dis dis skolle goed en dis was goed en en dinge gaan net so vinnig dat mens so vinnig kan vergeet en dit nie meer prioriseer nie en so so weke en half terug het ek self ook so tyd met die Here spandeer ek het net uit my huis uit geloop in die aand ek hou baie daarvan om in die aand met die Here tyd te spandeer ek spiek hier meer van 'n aand mens my energie is nie so hoog in die oggend nie en 
het net onder die sterre gaan staan, onder die maan, en ek het net my hart voor die Heere net, net uitgestort, en, en dis toch een ding wat ek net ook hier mee kan aanmoedig om te doen, is, dus hy nou gesê het so mooi, it starts with Him, wat ek jou aanmoedig, just go to Him, en wanneer by hom staan, vraag hom om jou een begeerde te gee, om tyd saam met hom te spandeer, ja, daar het my, al hoeveel keer in my leven, wanneer ek dier droe fases van my leven gaan, waar ek voel ek kom nie genoeg in die woord in nie, of ek, ek het nie genoeg in gebed nie, dan vraag ek hom, en sê, jyre, ek so jammer, ek, I'm, I'm neglecting you, but, but give me that hunger, reignite that flame in my heart, and every time he does it. Dis my so mooi, ek het so begeerd om met die hele tyd spandeer op die oomlik, en dis my so lekker, en ek bid het vir jou ook toe. En vanavond sy Zoom keier 8 hier, waar jylle amal na toe uitgenooi is, gaan ons nog verder praat hier oor. Hoe prakties spandeer ek tyd met die Heere? Ons gaan een of twee methodes ook vir julle leer. Waar begin jy in die Bijbel? Waar begin jy te lees? Hoe journal jy dalk? Hoe bid jy? Um, so, ek jy raarig uitnooi, nooi ek vriende uit um, in die tyd waar ek sikkel, of nie weet waarom te begin. En miskien is jy vir die eerste keer wat jy kom keier saam met ons hier op Facebook, en jy het ook nog nie so verhouding met die Heere nie, kom ons help jou, kom ons stap saam met jou, en ons leer jou hoe om dit te doen, en om die Heere sy stem te kan hoor, en ook vir hom terug jou liefde te kan wees. Dank het jy vandag saam met ons gekeier het, en um, mag jy een uh, wonderlijke dag verder he, tot ziens.